Welcome back to the Lost Constellations. I'm John Berentine, Director of Public Policy at IDA. Throughout International Dark Sky Week 2020, we've explored constellations that once appeared on star charts, but that were discarded in the early 20th century in a process that gave us the night sky recognized by modern astronomers. The final lost constellation for International Dark Sky Week is Telescopium Herschelii E Major, which represents a particular telescope that was important in the history of astronomy in the late 18th century. It was among the largest telescopes of its time and it helped push outward the boundaries of the known universe. The Hungarian astronomer Maximilian Hell introduced two new constellations in 1789, commemorating the discovery of the planet Uranus by Sir William Herschel eight years earlier. The constellations were meant to represent two of Herschel's telescopes, one 20 feet in length, with which he made most of his observations, and a smaller seven-foot telescope used to discover Uranus. He called them Tubus Herschelli Major and Tubus Herschelli Minor on star charts for the year 1790 published in Milan, Italy. However, as the author Ian Ridpath pointed out, based on Hell's inaccurate depictions of the instruments, quote, Hell had not seen either telescope, unquote. William Herschel was one of the most famous British astronomers of all time, amateur or professional, but he hailed from Hanover, Germany, which was ruled in personal union with the United Kingdom from 1714. Born into a musical family in 1738, Herschel played oboe in the military band of the Hanoverian Guards and composed music throughout his life. His military service brought him to England where he took up astronomy as a hobby. His sister Caroline followed and became first his assistant in recording observations at the telescope and later a famous astronomer in her own right. In addition to discovering the first new planet known since antiquity, William observed thousands of double stars and nebulae, now known to be non-stellar objects such as star clusters and galaxies. His observations resulted in what is probably the first attempt in history to make a structural model of the Milky Way, and Herschel correctly concluded that the solar system is embedded inside it. From this vantage point, Herschel wrote in 1785, quote, the heavens will not only be richly scattered over with brilliant constellations, but a shining zone or Milky Way will be perceived to surround the whole sphere of the heavens, owing to the combined light of those stars which are too small, that is, too remote to be seen, unquote. While it was not the largest instrument he ever built, the 20-foot telescope was certainly the most useful. However, there was no single 20-foot telescope. Rather, there were two. Herschel distinguished the two telescopes he made with this common focal length as the large 20-foot, with a 48-centimeter aperture, shown here in a contemporary engraving, and the earlier small 20-foot, with only a 30-centimeter aperture. The small 20-foot was inadequate for the job, both to its relatively small light-gathering capacity and the awkward means of its use. The focal length of the telescope was sufficiently long that it could not be operated using a normal mount. Instead, as shown in the figure, the upper end of its tube was suspended from a mast by ropes, and the observer reached its focus only by standing high on the ladder. Once an observation was made, he had to descend the ladder, and once safely again on solid ground, record what he saw. Ultimately, Herschel decided that the mounting issue for these very long focus instruments was a serious problem, and he completely reconsidered his design for the large 20-foot. He had constructed a large wooden frame, about two stories in height, which sat upon a circular track. The telescope focus was accessed from a stable platform attached to the mount, which could be lifted and lowered according to the desired pointing of the telescope. Helpers on the ground were needed to rotate the entire contraption and to raise and lower the tube by means of a hand crank. The telescope outlived Herschel, traveling in a rebuilt form with his son John, a famous astronomer of the early 19th century, during his South Africa expedition of 1834 to 1838. With it, the younger Herschel discovered thousands more objects in the southern hemisphere night sky. Maximilian Hell's telescopes honoring William Herschel did not survive the 19th century. They gradually disappeared from star charts, with the larger telescope remaining only as an asterism, a kind of informal grouping of stars without the identity of a constellation, as late as about 1910. Perhaps driving their loss was the much earlier introduction of another telescope, a constellation simply called Telescopium, by Nicolas Louis de la Cale in the early 1750s. La Cale suggested a number of new constellations in the southern night sky after his expedition to the Cape of Good Hope 
in modern South Africa, nearly all of which commemorated items associated with the arts and sciences of his time. When the list of modern constellations was formalized by astronomers in the 1920s, Lakell's telescope made the cut while Hell's did not. This lost constellation is best seen during the Northern Hemisphere winter. To follow it, first locate the bright yellow star Capella, the brightest star in the constellation of Auriga, the charioteer. From there, scan south and east until you come to Castor and Pollux, also called Alpha and Beta Geminorum, the brightest stars in the constellation Gemini. A few degrees west of Castor is a third magnitude star, Theta Geminorum. This was once the brightest star in Telescopium Herschelii e Major. Lying just north of a line connecting Capella and Castor, a series of evenly spaced fifth magnitude stars marks the tube of the telescope. Thanks for joining me this week on a deep dive into the history of the constellations that were cast aside as astronomers made the modern night sky in the last century. If we want to preserve their living history in this form, we need to be able to see these constellations, and that depends on clear views of dark night skies. To learn more about how you can preserve the memory of the lost constellations and dark skies, visit our website at darksky.org.